In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the final tier on your Entrelac dishcloth. The first three tutorials have already been posted, and you would have uh, created your base triangles, your first tier, which are the blue, and your second tier, which are the yellow here in the center. Uh, those tutorials are posted, and if you have missed those tutorials, you can go back and check those out. But in this tutorial, we're going to focus on finishing off the entrelock uh, dishcloth with the final tier. So, the final tier starts very much like tier number two, where we're going to go about picking up stitches along this, ex this edge of the lower triangle. So I'm going to pick up five stitches because I already have the one stitch that's left over from the previous tier. And once I have picked up the five stitches, I'm going to move that stitch back over so that I can do an SSK with that stitch there, with the stitch from the lower triangle. So that is where, just like the uh, tier number two, then we are going to knit backwards, or if you choose, you may turn your work. We're going to knit backwards all the way to the end of the row. And this is where we will start decreasing our stitches so that we have a straight line across the top of our dishcloth. So we are going to start with an SSK here. And then we are going to knit three. And then we are going to do an SSK with the last stitch and the first stitch of the triangle below, or the tier below. So now we have decreased the number of stitches to five, where we had six before. Then we will knit backwards, back to the beginning of the row. And again, when we start this, this uh, row, we're going to do an SSK to decrease our stitches, and then knit two, and then do an SSK to join with the tier below. Now we have decreased to four stitches, and we will knit backwards. And then again, SSK at the beginning of the row. Then knit one and SSK. Now we're down to three stitches. And we'll knit backwards. And again, SSK at the beginning, making sure to keep that um, the the yarn taut, and then SSK here, and knit backwards. As you will see, we have two stitches left, and we can't exactly do an SSK and an SSK. So in this case, we are going to go ahead and do a slip slip but we're not going to knit them just yet. We're going to knit this stitch, and then we're going to pass those two slipped stitches over as such. And now we're going to pick up stitches along this edge. And because we have a stitch here, we are again only going to pick up five stitches along this edge to have a total of six. And just like before, we'll, we'll, we will slip that stitch back over and do an SSK to join those two stitches. 
and then knit backwards. And you're always knitting backwards the full the full row here. You're doing all of your decreases when you are working from le uh, right to left. And then we're going to do an SSK to decrease our stitches. And then knit across. And SSK. And knit backwards. And you're just going to continue that until all of your stitches are bound off. And if I lay this flat, I'll show you. You can see that again we have a right angle and our triangle ends off there. And again, when we get to the last three stitches, the two of the current triangle and one of the other triangle, then we just do a slip slip, and then we knit one, and we pass those two slip stitches over. And you're going to continue this for picking up stitches here and picking up stitches here, and by the time you get to the end, you will have just one stitch that you will bind off. So when you end at the at the last stitch, all you have to do is just uh, bind off that last stitch by pulling that yarn through the center, just like you would bind off any other stitch. Now, if you are anything like me, you might find once you have your finished piece, and this is a finished one that's blocked, it looks really nice. But if you feel like that this is not um, kind of look had the finished look or maybe you're doing something that's a little bit larger maybe you're doing a stole or some type of um, scarf or something like that and you want something that's a little bit more polished maybe you might want to have a crochet edge around the outside now on this one I have just done a simple scallop edge along on, along the outside of this uh, entrelock dishcloth. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that now just in case you want to finish it off. What it does is it, it makes a nice edge and if you've made your dishcloth a little bit smaller it can make your dishcloth a little bit larger. So I am going to go ahead and show you how I went about doing that. And all you're going to do is I started in the center. I, I tried to make it so that I had my scallops um, um, along the edge and I used the center of the, the triangles along with the top of the triangles to kind of base where I place have my placement. Now I'm going to just start with a slip stitch right here approximately in the center. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, I didn't I wasn't really um, too exact when I did when I did mine. It really comes out pretty good either way. And what I did was I did a triple crochet scallop. And a triple crochet is with two wraps. 
and then go ahead and insert wherever you're going to insert and I'm going to just go right here and actually I'm going to pull up those two there we go and the triple crochet and then you pull through two pull through two and then pull through the final now the other that last one looked like two stitches but it was actually me securing that uh, slip stitch down and you're going to do five of these in the same stitch So five triple crochets in the same stitch, and then you're going to secure down. What did I do? Got that all twisted around there. And then you're going to secure down with a slip stitch again in the center of the next block. And all you're going to do is go in. You're not. You don't have any wraps around there first. You pull one through, and then pull it through again. Okay, and then you're going to do five triple crochets in the next, the next um, top. And like I said, I'm in the center and then the top of the, uh, the tier below. So actually, I didn't quite get two. I lost one. Okay, so I have two wraps, and then I'm going to pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. And we're going to again, we're going to do five. So now we have five and we're going to just slip stitch here. And then we're going to do five again in the top over here. And when I say the top, I'm talking about the top of this triangle. Where I'm in the center of this triangle here, I'm at the top of this triangle. And you can see how the, the the scallop is coming along the top. Now we're going to go ahead and secure down again here in the center approximately. And on the corner it's going to be a little bit different. You are going to do scallops at the corner, but you're going to do nine in the corner instead of just five because we need to get around that corner. So we're just going to do nine um, triple crochets around the, the edge. Making sure to secure it pretty good. I want to make sure that I'm getting through at least two of my, my stitches.
and then we have a total of 9, and then we're going to secure down on the side of this triangle, just like we did with the others, just like that. And then we're going to again do our scallops across this edge, do 9 in this edge over here, scallops across this edge, 9, scallops, and then 9, and then we're going to join back to where we originally cast on right here. Okay, so I just finished my final um, nine double crochet or triple crochets around the corner, and I'm going to just do a slip stitch with the stitch that I started with. So I'm just going to pull my yarn through just like we would we did when we were um, attaching it down, just securing it down there. And then all you're going to do is snip it and pull it through just like you would bind off any other stitch. And then you block your dishcloth and you have a fancy entrelock dishcloth. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series on the stockinette entrelock dishcloth. Please stay tuned in the coming weeks when we will go through the garter stitch entrelock dishcloth and also the purling backwards technique. You will see the purling backwards technique before we start the dishcloth, so you can have a chance to practice that. But what I like about the garter stitch entrelock is that it's the same on both sides. It's the same on both sides. Whereas the stockinette side, the stockinette entrelock, you have this portion and then this portion. Now let me show you one that's actually uh, blocked, so you can see it a little bit better. So you have a stockinette here, but then you have a reverse stockinette here and it's not that it doesn't look the same whereas this garter stitch entrelock it looks the same on both sides now this particular one I just used the same color but you can do it um, with the alternating colors like we did for the stockinette one so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will come back and check out the next tutorial series for the the garter stitch entrelock and as always, remember that I do have the pattern written up in Ravelry that you can purchase. And it gives you all the instructions on how to do it, but you do not need the pattern in which to do this tutorial series. So thanks so much for watching. Bye for now. As always, thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Please feel free to contact me with your comments or suggestions as I am always trying to improve the show. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube as Blooming Knitter. You can also find me on Plurk, Twitter, and Pinterest as Blooming Knitter, but I don't frequent those sites as often. I post show updates on Twitter and Facebook, and sometimes to Google Plus and Plurk. I am Miss Aerobics on MyFitnessPal and Fitbit. You can always find all the old episodes as well as links to the tutorials on the blog at www.knittingblooms.com. And you can also follow the show on Facebook. You can email me at knittingblooms at gmail.com and show notes can be found at knittingblooms.com.